Hello! Welcome to episode two of Practice With Me, which is a series of videos in which we both practice together. Now, if you're watching this video in the bus or on your bed or on your couch and just browsing, thank you. You might not get the most out of this video though. In order to make the most of this video, grab your guitar. If you don't have a guitar at hand, just maybe save this into a playlist so that you can go back to it. These videos are meant to be standalone videos for players who want to play something, practice, they don't know what, well just start a video, guitar in hand, and uh, backing tracks as well. By the way, the link is below if you want to download the backing tracks in this episode. And uh, we're gonna get started. <laughs> I thought since I uh, just released a video on what can we learn from Jimi Hendrix, you can watch that one after, we'd work on double stops. You know, the, the Hendrix-y type of cleany um, thing that he does in Little Wing, amongst other, other things, or blending rhythm and, and lead at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, close up. Well, this is really an exploration game. I'm gonna start with something in A, a minor, A minor pentatonic here, first position. Five eight, five seven, five seven, five seven, five eight, five eight, and we're gonna play two notes at the same time on consecutive strings. So maybe I'll pick the first two strings. By the way, before we do this, it's important to I think to visualize the fretboard from your perspective uh, in uh, this way. Left, that's the the furthest note that you have away from that position towards the neck, and right, that's towards the bridge. So a pentatonic would be left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Just a succession of these two notes, because we have two notes per string. So we're gonna play two consecutive left notes on strings one and two, so that'll be a little bar here. And then we're gonna try, um, we'll, we'll go simple. We'll play these two left notes, followed by the two right notes, okay? across the whole pentatonic, okay? So something like that. Five, eight, and then on strings two and three we have two fives, and then we have a seven and an eight, and then two fives, two sevens, two fives, two sevens, two fives, and then eight, seven. Now that we have the position, we're gonna make some music. I think it's oftentimes a step that we forget. We start making music way too late after memorizing the position. So it's really important, I think, as soon as you have an idea of where to put your fingers, start creating something right away. I don't know what will come out, we'll see. I'm gonna mess up, but that's what practice with me is really about. <laughs> so I'll try to, I'm gonna give myself a little, little bounce here. So I did this slide thing, just experimented with it. I can't do it all the time. For instance, I can't do it here when I'm on the, the second and the third string, because the slide would be right here, and this note right here is not within the pentatonic scale. I know it's in a different scale, it will sound cool, but I'm trying to really limit myself whenever I'm practicing to something um, very, very strict. So in this case, the pentatonic scale. So let's just continue jamming a little bit with this. Um, because you're practicing with me, hopefully, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to set something a little less improv-y, and maybe we'll do um, da da. That'll be the beat. Da ga da ga da ga da ga. Eighth notes, and we'll start with the right notes. Something like that. Okay. One, two, three, four. Again. backwards starting from the right here yeah one more time oh that was interesting I didn't mean to do that and if you've watched the channel before you know that whenever you stumble upon an accident and you like it which I did here I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that put it in a box where okay that was cool 
let me see, let me see, um, let me go down to the list of, uh, of filters and see what I can do with this. So the filters are the theory filter. What was that? So what I did here was play my uh, third and second string on the fifth fret. And then the next note up, which is the right side, would be fret seven and eight, because we're sticking to that pentatonic. And then here, the, the accident was two strings here, strings one and two on the fifth fret, barred. And then here, instead of doing uh, the same strings on the eighth fret, I did seven and eight. So the, the theory filter would be, okay, this, what is this note? Well, that note is not within the minor pentatonic scale. Still sounds cool. This happens to be a major sixth. So the major sixth is found in Dorian. So that means that this type of uh, accident could be used in a Dorian context. That was just a side note. Whenever you have an accident, go through the first the theory filter so that you can reuse it. And then you go through the technique filter, make sure that you can redo this so that it's not just an accident. And then the what I will call the exploration filter where you're actually trying to make a piece of music with that. Back to double stops. I'm gonna bring in a backing track here that you can download for free below. There's a link that'll take you to the sign-up page and you can access all the downloads of the channel for free. Just sign up once and get access to all that. But I'm gonna practice my double stops. I, I changed my tone, something a little more uh, leady. And I'm gonna practice those double stops. So I'm in uh, A minor pentatonic. And whenever I want to work on a concept with a backing track, I'm not just going to work on the concept. I'm going to try to blend right away the idea with some, some other ideas that I might have, my, my regular phrasing. I don't want to replace all the stuff that I usually do. No, I just want to inject into my regular playing this concept. Ah, that wasn't great. I'll try it again. Definitely not in my proudest moments, but that's what I would do. I would try to really, right away, use something that is a little uncomfortable into my regular playing so that eventually it will become comfortable. Because if you only focus on the new thing, in this case the double stops, I'm gonna switch back to a clean tone. Well, you're gonna get really good at uh, playing those double stops. But when it comes to using it in your regular playing, then it's not necessarily gonna work. The, those transitions, because there are transitions that happen mentally and, uh, and then physically. The double stop thing is a little more impactful, you know, a little more forced than you might be using in your regular everyday playing. I don't know, but, but all those things need to happen at the same time as you're working on a concept. Uh, let's, let's try something else here. Let's try injecting the double stop concept in a non-pentatonic way. Let's, uh, let's work in the key of G major. Now again, there's a lot of different positions you can use. I use the cage system here, which fits my chord really well, but I could use the three note per string system. But here I'm just using the cage system. So for those of you who don't know, from the low E string, we have frets three, five, and then on the next string, two, three, five, next one, two, four, five, next one, two, four, five again, and then on the second string, three, five, and on the first string, two, three, five. And we're just gonna try that uh, double stop. So the, the difficulty here is that we no longer are strictly having two notes per string like we did for the pentatonic scale. That's the major pentatonic that is found. 
oops, within the G major. We have sometimes two notes, but sometimes three. Sometimes two and sometimes three. So we're gonna experiment a little bit. I, I have choices here. For instance, on that first string, if I descend, we have five, three, two, five, three. Well, what should I do? I don't know. I could maybe, um, maybe pick um, five, uh, three and three right here. So I can do um, add, add a note on the fifth fret of the first string. Do I like this? Yes, I do, I personally do. So I'm gonna keep this in the yes box. If I play something that I don't like, say, um, let's see if that happens. <laughs> Not that I never play something that I don't like, I often do, but let's see. So we have this as a choice. Maybe I could do uh, the additional note on the second string, fifth fret because all these notes are within my scale, right? But I could also maybe use um, this shape, start with this shape, because this note, second string, fifth fret, and this one, um, first string, second fret, are part of my scale. So in theory, I could do that. So let's try that. So I've got this, I'm gonna add this note right here on the first string, fifth fret. Do I like this in context of G? Uh, kind of, it's not my favorite. So I'm gonna put it in the maybe box. Those are mental boxes. <laughs> um, maybe this, so I'm gonna make my choices here. I, I really like this, which is fun in the pentatonic. Double stops are really great with pentatonic scales. You just experiment with these notes. Pick two notes, two consecutive notes, and see what it does. It's really about exploration. I think practice, whether you're practicing with me or on your own, should always have an element of adventure on the instrument to discover new things and just try things out. I have a, a, another backing track here. It's in G major. So great. We just practiced in G major. <laughs> yes, it was planned. Okay, so we're going to try this. The same exact thing, right? I like it. I like that one. Ooh, I like this one sometimes. All these notes are found in that um, G major scale, right? So the one I really liked was this. Which was, um, it started right here. Uh, kind, of, kind of like a D position, right? Uh, second string, third fret, first string, second fret. And then I added on um, the first string, the, the third fret. And so forth. And then you can try to develop that on different positions. Ah. And when you make mistakes, put it in the no box. I'm gonna include this backing track as well in the, the link below. And again, not only these, but pretty much all the downloads, all the backing tracks that I'm using on the videos. And I think we're up to 1700 videos on the channel. So that's a lot of backing tracks free. Just click the link below, sign up once, and you'll get access to all of those. I'm gonna continue working on this a little bit, and I hope you do too. I hope you take this to the next, you know, 30 minutes or whatever you want. And, um, I hope you enjoyed practicing with me a little bit today, and I hope it gives you new ideas, and, and really, this is just the starting point. I'm going to link here to the first episode of Practice With Me, if you wanna continue practicing. In that one, we talked about something influenced by Andy Timmons, I think. Check it out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe uh, button below, bell notification and all that, and then uh, grab the backing tracks below. Thanks so much for watching this. I'll see you next time. Practice well.